Salutations, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lasters of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Comey Lover. Right now, we're doing For Our Prosperity. Poverty is a bane of all nations. As the wealth and well-being of all the people diminishes, so too does their homeland. Russia could build cities of gleaming spires, establish a space program, and become the world's largest nuclear power yet. None of these things would elevate the poor from the gutter and give them the happiness they deserve. We should attack poverty directly and decisively. The better to end its tyranny. This is not a battle that can be won overnight, but future victory can be secured right now. What keeps people in poverty, as they need to live on a nice edge. That can always be allayed with a proper safety net. When the poor no longer need to worry about affording the next meal keeping a roof over their heads, they can become productive citizens and help lift themselves out of deprivation and despair. But after that, an, education, an educated populace. When a child is given a worldly, well-rounded education, their potential increases exponentially. So with it, it nations as well. Yes, Russia has traditionally been a land of uneducated peasants and workers, but that doesn't have to be so. Establishing new schools all across the nation must be a top priority. Every year that goes by without a proper education system is another generation denied the future they deserve. If Russia is to have diplomats, scientists, engineers, and artists, the basic prerequisites for their existence must first be met. And also right now, we are uh, going to get the boost. We're trying to integrate Orenburg and see what happens with them. So Keep spending, spending, spending for now. We've got some comms to go through, but standardize the schools. <clears throat> The question of curriculum has always been too political. Every scheming dictator and obsessive ideologue wants children to learn nothing more than what they deem appropriate. This has been the downfall of every education system that caters to the masses, and it will not be repeated here. The fledgling Department of Education has begun to drop a standard curriculum under the President's oversight. The emphasis will be on the most on the things the most important for modern nations, science and mathematics. All other fields are will be under the jurisdiction of the autonomous republics and regional governments. This will demonstrate our trust in subordinate governments and allow for the safe continuation of minority cultures as we have a sip of coffee. Even though, I suppose I could say I'm a little worried about uh, our debt, but not really. I'll focus on education. One of the SMR's core policies. Look at that, integration. Within the Republic, in terms of availability, quality, and efficiency is now being prioritized by the state. Funds have been made available and focuses has been applied from both executive and legislative bodies towards such efforts. Exhaustive in nature, they have been instantiated at every level of governmental administration, and reforms range from examinations of school density distributions to the development of standardized testing measures and more besides. However, perhaps the greatest achievement of the state in this regard has been a general agreement by all concerned, concerned parties that the available quality, uh, quality available of available education has sharply increased. Strenuous qualification standards that focus att attention, attraction, and repatriation of exiled and expatriate academics, and the provision of proper funding and equipment for scientific purposes have contributed to this. Although the level of the Republic's available academic offerings does not yet begin to approach that of a more established loca localese, such as the Reich sphere of the U.S., the gap is quickly closing. This is being recognized, and also quite rightly being attributed to the SMR, a feature for Russian academia. And since we have eight more divisions, make them all 40 combat with, and throw them on the line as well, just because we're going to need them. Pretty gosh darn soon, especially when we go to war with Germany, so that's why I'm not really concerned about GDP, because now it costs probably 10 billion. So, whatever. Um, let's go and try to integrate both areas, and then we'll do what? Agriculture is already pretty good enough. It's so good, I don't really want to do it anymore. Um, education, proof of training. A bonus for industry would be very nice, so that's what I like to grab. Oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes. Well, it was unity in science. Science has, is the way to the future, but our progress in that direction has been halted. The rest of the world has moved on, while we, the Russians, are still working with textbooks from the early Soviet era. The risk problem is easily remedied. But how to get ordinary people invested in this boring subject? Why propaganda? Propaganda is a dirty word these days, but how else can a government effectively convey its ideals and intentions? It doesn't have to mean brainwashing in 24-hour broadcasts. We can campaign for science through the TV, radio, newspapers, as we would if we were recruiting for the military. The lessons learned from soaking patriotic pride can be applied well in the popularization of science oh and we got some uh, some technology done too nice 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 uh, I don't want, I want to wait for that one because we will need to get some anti-air eventually but a bright generation President Kosygin is said by some to desire nothing more or less than to be at the head of the grand bureaucratic machine they say that he cares only for the sense of satisfaction he feels at knowing his grand design is functioning smoothly they are wrong the greatest and noblest of the president's desires is to leave Russia in a better state than he found it. The best way to ensure that happens is to give all of Russia's children the twin gifts of education and safety. In time, it'll fall to them to continue what we have started. Russia's future lives and dies in the hearts of these future workers and intellectuals, and the generation that will shine brightest of all. Keep getting more Artie. Oh, good God, Artie's going to be the key to our success. Just destroying as much enemy manpower as possible, and getting more planes eventually, too, will be super, 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 super important. Vlasov, hello there, Vlasov. 
Nice. They're not great fighters, but you know what? I'll take them. A bright generation, my friends. A very bright generation. Followed up with what? Um, construction would not be bad. Research facilities. We will go over some comps as well, like I said, but we'll look at there just a little bit. Uh, academic base here, why not? <coughs> Should have said that for poverty, but the Russian Republican Army. Our brave men in the field have accomplished a lot for us, yes, but we need to start bringing the Russian Republican Army to contemporary standards. The Germans, Japanese, and Americans, all have top-notch militaries, as luckily due to the advanced tactics and modern weapons, neither of which we currently have. In order to restore our Russian prestige, we must work to modernize the army and join the ranks of the global superpowers in terms of military might. Yeah, I don't care about Zatal stuff. I'll be honest, it does not concern me one single bit. Oh, another plane, nice. Um, also, additionally, oh, one of the comments from yesterday says, I should do Syria in the Thousand Week Reich mod. That'd be kind of interesting, yeah, maybe sometime. I'm not opposed to playing Thousand Week Reich, even though I don't play it very often. Um, just whenever I've got more time, I probably will, so we'll get there. Followed up with, uh, onto the world stage. Now that we've become a regional power, it is time to start reaching out to nations beyond Russia. To achieve this, we need to establish a proper foreign military and hire diplomats that can have fully express our intentions to the world. Since we have become a contender for unifying Russia, the world is taking notice of our republic, and we need to make sure our first appearance and make our first appearance on the world stage. So why am I spending more money here? Okay, so one of the comments was like, why do I always build civvies? <coughs> That's basically because at the time of this recording, and this is definitely 100% subject to change, civvies basically get you money or GDP. And a higher GDP means bigger number. And you just don't want to have too much debt for, uh, compared to your GDP. That's pretty much it. That's why I never build millies. Just because they cost you money, and while civvies make you money. And I'd rather have no debt. So, at least until someday, uh, which you might be watching this then, but like, Toolbox Theory comes out. So, the update for TNL, which I hope someday comes out, but whatever. Um, the Rot March. Kirov nodded to the officer. My squad is ready for the march, officer. We are preparing to move the first five kilometers on your go. Besides him, the squad rustled in its frantic activity. Water canteens needed filling. Loaded bags checking. Rifles inspecting. There were barely enough hands on deck to accomplish it all. As the other officers lumbered away, Kirov whispered, A crap bag. What an insufferable son of a gun. After scheduling the discussion on idiotic march on a Friday effing evening of all things, did the colonel have his brain install where the arsehole was meant to be? God, it was intolerable. The only reason why I put up with all, put up with any of it all, because the Republican Army still was the finest pension fund in all the Republic. Kirov was a man of faith. He had faith only in what men could bring him. That was. And having looked through the pension plans, he knew exactly what the next few decades would bring him, assuming he lived through it all. Well, time to stop speculating on the future. The present and the squad awaited him. He moved onwards towards the squad. Are you lot ready to go? Get your thumbs out of your butts, gentlemen. It's time to start hauling booty. And if you got a lot, and if you lot taught me anything, it's that man without brains can get very, very, very far in life. It's time to start putting that theory to practice. A chuckle escaped the squad, and Kirov's gaze shot to its source. Glaring at the conscript, Kirov let the coldness of the evening into his voice. Did you think that was funny, Private? Don't give me an answer. You'll have time to think about that on guard duty tomorrow. Double shifts. He turned to the rest of the squad. Get ready to move. One mic, and anyone else who thinks themselves a clown can let me know. I still have a roster to fill. Darn Private had the whole squad laughing. <laughs> good, good, good. So, like I said yesterday, I think, or last video, this stuff is okay. The war would be nice, but let's... Let's just the Unification Wars after we get some more industry built up first, of course. It's not 70 yet. We're working on it, though. I'm not sure if we really need extraction stuff, but oh well. It was not long ago when Russia was still fractured into various warlord states, each with their own dreams and aspirations of unifying the motherland. In some regions, chaos remains widespread. It was only through our military that we became the strongest force we are today. There are many lessons that can be learned from the Unification Wars, including the tactics used to defeat insurgents and the military strategies behind the most successful warlords here in Russia. And also, Unification Wars is a beta for, like, Warhammer 40k stuff. Or preluding to that stuff, which is a pretty fun mod too. So, just saying. Um, what do we want here? Construction is not bad. This facility is okay. I might save it. Uh, I want to get poverty stuff. How much PP are we getting? Points of an eight. Yeah, I might just save it for poverty maybe. Let's do unification wars. Ah, screw it. I lied. Let's go scientific research. Infrastructure would be nice. Um, no. Construction speed is not bad, but honestly, I'm not doing agriculture because look at this. We're literally one below modern agriculture, and we're already at nine and a half, and we'll get it within like five months. So, tactical flexibility. Sometimes the ground battle plans may be disrupted by unexpected, uncontrolled events. We cannot expect every war to be carried out perfectly. Instead of relying on one large battle plan, we should start focusing on more officer initiative, letting the individual commander make the call based on the unique conditions around them. Because their overall command structures may break down, we might need to de delegate the decision making to the individual units on the ground. We must let each respective unit use the tactics they are best suited for their respective situation to win us this war. 
and army professors will begin to prove we get a little bit more manpower, which is not bad, but soon we must begin to go ahead and unite with Western Siberia. Yeah, I don't know, man. Construction, developmental subsidies. Yeah, I think it's best to wait for now. A modernized force. Though our Russian Republic or Russian Republican army is mightier than Russia, it's not compared to the contemporary forces of the three global superpowers. Many of our tactics and weapons are from the German Soviet War over twenty years ago. It is time to bring the RRA to the modern age. We'll renovate the army by increasing the military budget, investing in new military technologies, and explore the most recent military tactics. In the end, the Russian Republican army will become a Cold War ready force to be reckoned with. And army professionals will begin to rapidly improve. Nice. Always watching here. And just in case, keep training if you need it. Because my gosh, do we need it. Nice. <coughs> Mystery of Defense. Um, general Staff. Organization goes up. I like that. Strategic Supremacy. Yeah, that's that one. Reopening the Vyadka General Staff Assembly. The Tsarist of Russia once had a famous academy that was used to train new officers for the General Staff. And it's time that we revive that academy. It'll be used to pump out the best of the best generals for army and improve the officer corps with effort. It could become one of the top military academies in all of Russia. And it will become so. It absolutely will. Also, additionally, um, at this point, we're going to create an intelligence agency just because we could honestly probably use it. And it'll help us prepare for the war against the Germans. So... Just thinking ahead of time. Especially as we're trying to make more equipment. Oh, that's why I keep boosting up military spending right now. Because that actually helps you boost up more equipment. But, airline battle. For the last time, officer, I am not handing over the strategy of the of the of this country to a council that thinks the army can be relegated to a secondary priority. The threat of a binder punctuated the last words, and Strelkov flinched. At least the commander had an aim for his head this time. If the council truly believes that this newfangled strategy is what is best, I think that we best safeguard the real power far away from them until they are disputed of the notion. Strelkov nodded helplessly. Commander Grigorenko, please, this is not a usurpation or anything of the sort. We're simply attempting to better strategy now that our air force is in working condition. After all, we in the Republic cannot afford casualties the same way large countries can. Another binder thought, this one louder than the first. You're delusional that if the airland strategy will be safeguarding our losses. Strelkov, I've been working for the close to a decade in the military, and an entire operational doctrine has been configured to work with combined armor infantry operations. The Air Force will only complicate the state of affairs by stealing resources and money from us. Strelkov needed his temples. Commander, there is to be no stealing. We'll allocate funds as we deem fit for the health of the Republic. Moreover, we are aware that the transition to airland battle will take quite some time. So, which is why we need you on board. What else? Could, who else could train with us? Gregorenko simply shook his head. Tell your council that they have two options. They can stick with my suggestions, or they can stumble around in the dark by themselves. I will not stand for the strategic blunder, and I cannot live with myself if I were to further it. Now, go. <clears throat> uh, airline battle sounds promising. Uh, I like army XP, but... We don't need air XP, but air doctrine would be not too bad to grab, actually. We're pretty much doing with our air land doctrine anyway, so... Whatever. Um, let's go and change these guys up, too. There you go. Uh, I do like this. We have enough army XP to finally get 40 combat with tank divisions because we're going to need them. As soon as the war with Germany starts, we are absolutely going to need these guys. Badly. As many of them as we can get to. Change this. Oh, we're out of we're out of the stuff. Cool. Alright, so be it. Trade at least one at a time. And grab some motorized as well because these guys are 40 with combat with, with armor recon on them. So I could make some millies too. That, that would probably be a smart idea. We need way more arty though. Way more arty, way more anti-tank, way more tanks, way more planes. So, yeah, you guys are right. I probably could use some more stuff here. Um, infrastructure would not be bad. And it's modern increase GDP. All you get is infrastructure, though, so let's wait. Strategic supremacy. When it comes to war, weapons are only good as a, the person handling them. Offensive and defensive tactics are only as effective as the commander issuing them. We must strive for the greatest tacticians in all of Russia and defeat our enemies through superior tactics alone. At the end of the day, it is our military maneuvers that will set us above our fiercest opponents. Cool. Um, Fuel-wise, we should be okay-ish. Oh, did I forget about this? Yes, I did. My bad. Give more research speed. That'd be good. Oh! Oh! Wait. How is Germany... Ooh. Oh, okay. Germany is actually going to war with them. Go figure. Meeting the station. God, this place is... This place is so far. But if you like to read about better armed professionals, please go right ahead. So, so, uh, Sokolov grumbled as he checked the timing for the truck. This rusty old wristwatch has been a gift from Dad, but there's no sign of his father's precision now as he watched the dusty robe. It had been, if this little contraption was accurate, almost half an hour since the scheduled delivery to the military academy. How the heck was he supposed to get there on time? 
Yes, far indeed. I've been waiting for 45 minutes myself. There's a twinkle in the other man's eyes. Sokolov sized him up, suspicious as a minor son in a poor district could be of someone who looked suspiciously bourgeois. Dressed in relatively well-tailored clothing with a little cap to save off the wind, this man looked nothing like we'd been told to encounter him. I don't believe we've met. I'm Simeon. You? Sokolov glared at the hand, then, re then relented and shook. I'm Sokolov. self assictive guard. You with Academy? Simeon, if that was his real name, nodded. A smile from on his face. Well then, I suppose we'll get acquainted eventually. What's your designated specialization? The man rustled about in his breast pocket and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper. Ah, I'm assigned to artillery and fire control. You're infantry standards, I take it. I know they're taking a lot of them these days, and you seem the type. Sokolov nodded, chuckling a bit. <clears throat> Can't believe they sent me to Vyaka after sending me to the rough bodies. Think the army wants to kill me between the both of us? Simeon chuckled back, and the air between them grew easy. Why did you sign up? This course ain't going to be easy for any of us. The man seemed almost shy. The same reason as you. I love my country. He waved to the fields around him, boundless as the sky itself. And I want to keep it free, Sokolov nodded. The two were very different, but they were going to get along just fine. But enter his boys and leave his men. Infantry equipment uh, stuff. Uh, oh, this one. Infantry equipment trials. Our soldiers require high-quality guns for use in the field, and unfortunately, all we have are World War II-era rifles, and whatever left over from the Zlatalis merchants. Once old trials and competitions to develop a new standard infantry rifle that can be mass-produced for our men. Better guns means more of the enemy we can kill to win the war. Yeah, pretty good. We could use more war spurt, though. Um, 25 is not bad. Mm, I'll do it once. Why not? We don't need any more stability right now, but whatever. We'll grab it anyways. As we're developing our intelligence agency, which we will need eventually. Which is good, good, good. And research-wise, about a month left for two more technologies. Look how fast we're improving everything. That's so nice. <clears throat> and, very good. But, open the gates. Back when we were a smaller power, much of our trade was confined to Russia only. As a current regional power, we need to start branching out to other nations beyond the motherland, especially the democratic countries around the world. Now that we have some coastal territories in northern Russia, it would be beneficial for us to establish a merchant marine operating around the White Sea, protecting a, protected by a few of our ships. Nice. If you want to read about better agricultural methods, please go ahead. And we have modern agriculture here. And a better industrial equipment, too. Nice. And an improved academic base. Wow. I've never had all three uh, uh, happen at the same time, so that's actually pretty good. Anything else here? Oh, it is 1969, my friends. And unfortunately, we cannot peacefully reunify because these guys, well, have not peacefully reunified themselves. Or even fought themselves to unify. If you want about this, please go right ahead. Thank you. 9.6. I just want to get one more thing here for regional development, man. One more poverty thing. The last democracies of Europe. Make formal contacts across the sea. Visit Washington. Nice. Improved in the Army Corps. The new Hussars. We kind of cool to do. Good, good, good for that arty. Keep improving it. Oh, did England fall? Oh my gosh. A blow a kiss. Fire a gun. After we get some more of this. Kornev had the gun stock ahead of him. There it was. The de defect he'd been warned about was clear as day now. Just bent a little forward, forcing the shooter's position down by hair's breadth. Perhaps it was acceptable in the Tals, whose standards were as low as the Altai Basin's dunes, but not here. He lowered the gun and began to pour over the blueprints scattered around him in a half blossom. Perhaps it had been the material, perhaps there was a structural cause in sight. The later the latter will explain why the soldiers on the testing squad had complained so bitterly about the loading and unloading drills. Something about the barrel then. But the reports had focused on the firing pin mechanism itself. So it couldn't possibly be that. Maybe in the way the barrel interacted with the firing pin? Yes, perhaps the explosion of the shot had cracked something with him. A passing soldier yelled, Kornev, Kornev. Hard at work, it's almost lunchtime. Koronev, barely looking up, greeted him and told him in no uncertain terms to go away. Well, Soldier giggled as he left. It was adorable, the way Koronev was so immersed in his work, he was blind to everything else. Absolutely adorable. Koronev's mind was far away, however. The rifle, as did all the equipment he'd been given, preoccupied him. Some solution needed to be found in the meantime. The barrel system would probably need a full rework of the design. Perhaps even a back-to-basics test, but the main problem, as he saw it, was the drooping. Yes, perhaps that, that would have to do. Corner scribbled, put some extra stock on the rifle and tell them to aim higher. Satisfied, he nodded and went on his next rifle. Every soldier needs something to lean on and learn on. The only available tanks... Oh, hold on, let me get this one first. The only available tanks that we do have currently are from the Second World War, and they do not compete with the armored forces of Germany, Japan, and the U.S. If we make a swift advance and blast our enemies to pieces, we need to improve the quality of our tanks significantly. We'll hold trials to see who can produce the most effective armored tanks that we can use for the army, hopefully. The end result will be a tank that can compete with that of our rifles. That'd be very good, actually, if we could do that. Um, we... Ooh. You, come over here. Keep training. You guys done training? Good. Good. There you go. See what you there. Nice.
We got plenty to build. And there goes Serbia. I'm just hoping that once... Uh, I'm building all the cities here. Uh, but eventually, like... Part of my strategy is just to conquer cities. So, that's pretty much why I, I do it. Not bad. Alright, let's go to 68. Because it's 69. Nice. Anything else there? No, I'll do one of these two. Doesn't really matter to me. Um, no. I wouldn't mind that. You know what? Do that one too, because you can. The Ministry of Defense. I'll do across the seas. We already enjoyed di diplomacy with several European nations, but we must also look beyond our home continent for potential allies. Though North America is a distant continent, it serves as the pedestal for the last shining beacon of democracy left on Earth. We, shall s we should seek to establish connections with Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. in order to gain more international recognition and more embassies on the western side of the Atlantic. Not a bad idea. And someone also says, someday I should play a s social democrat, or, s or Sock Dem Comey. Sock Dem Comey, yeah. I should play as Sock Dem Comey someday. Well, we'll get there eventually. Eventually, so. That'll be good to do someday. Goals, man, goals. I just want poverty to get better, man. <laughs> We're almost halfway with this. Uh, political interference is not great, but... Industrial expertise is going up too. Not bad, not bad. Improved on armor court. New Hussars. It was, in the end, the budget that decided it for them all. Not tactics, not war, not armor specific specifications, not even the opinions of the tank crews themselves. The budget simply didn't have enough room for the addition of tank units to the regiment of the existing armor corps. It would be necessary to reconsolidate their existing assets into a single unit, and retrain them day and night until they could perform the roles they'd missed. So the people's Hussar Division, as it was no, no one could remember the actual number in reference, was formed, and the farmers and their sons and daughters would watch the tanks move row on row into distant fields, towards the bases where they would be christened in a new name and mode. They were failures, and there was, as there always were. A few of the new models, fresh from the factory, had been broken down in a muddy field, and no one was yet sure if it was equipment failure or planning error that had brought them down. The rest of the models were dragged onto the main road and confined to purely motorized activity until something could be done with them. Time would tell if they needed to rebuild or if they could serve a supplementary function in the motorized corps. Even so, as the base commanders noted the plates and licenses of the tank's raid, there was a reason for celebration. This new division had already had plans in the works for a full blown multi branch exercise, and some whispered that its commanding officer was a glory hound who had pushed his men to the limits. There was a sense of general anticipation. This one, it was believed, would go far, and it would take the Republic with it. Let us hope it will make a difference, and the Ministry of Defense. In the process of upgrading our military, it's imperative that we expand our general staff to meet the new Army standards. We'll have to provide our generals with updated data from battlefields around the world and keep them informed from the latest military training methods. We must also streamline the Ministry of Defense bureaucracy in order to improve the effectiveness of our leading commanders. All right, everyone. So I'm just realizing now that uh, in Central Siberia, we have the All-Russian Army Revolt. What? I've never seen this before. Wait, how does this happen? If, if I guess if someone revolts, we have Rurik here, Andriev. Um, I've never seen. I've never seen a Vladimir Putin here, ever. He looks like he's seen some stuff. He's young and all stuff, but Salpin is here and trying to. Oh, I, oh my! Whoa, whoa! That was actually really cool. I've never seen that happen before, so that's actually awesome. But. We're still doing the Ministry of Defense. Let's do the Russian Republican Navy. Many years have passed since Russia had a navy she could be proud of. Over 20 years ago, the Kriegsmarine revenged or ravaged the Soviet Navy in the Black Sea during the Second World War. The time has come for us to establish a naval force like no other, one that will prove capable of destroying enemies at sea long before they can reach land. We'll start by expanding our shipyards, recruiting the best available sailors in Russia, and constructing the most up-to-date vessels. Because right now, we are currently doing uh, expanding poverty, or getting rid of poverty, and also improving our army professionalism as well, which is... Always a great, great thing. And there's some serious lag going on. Oh. Oh, the Ministry's antics. Oh, look at that. There had been a fist fight in the General HQ for quite a while now, and so... Korol Korolkov was taken by surprise when the latest iteration broke out. It had been sudden, too. One minute there was a reasonable discussion regarding prioritization of funding to be given to the military research department. And the next, a full-on fistfight had been in progress, with men in the middle age on both sides struggling to either restrain or deck their peers. Korolkov sighed another day in the Ministry of Defense and his assembly glories. Well, glories was a strong term, but he lacked another word for it. At least his paperwork would be used of you to the Republic, a paper drafted by one of his staffers on the movement of hybridized troops in the last days of the West Russian War, and a note on how to make it applicable to the Republic's current situation. Pouring through its conclusions, Korolkov nodded and making notes in the margins. There was plenty of work to be done to bring the military up to parity with its contemporaries, and this would definitely help. A stubble-headed member of the general staff approached him, and Korolkov got up to show the formalities. Stand down. I'm looking for a paperback. Something to fill a gap on someone's chair. Hmm. Have you seen any spare binders? Preferably something slim. Oh, oh, this will do. And the paperwork was snatched from Korolkov's desk. 
The general staff remember retreated and Kolkov needed his temples in frustration. This was the third day of promotion and already he missed nothing more than the lowly status of his previous position. The Republic he was certain it was doomed regardless, but at least he had been blind to it beforehand. My goodness, what a disaster. But their Air Force. One of the most valuable lessons the world learned from the devastating World War Second World War was the importance of air superiority and close air support of ground troops, unfortunately. The Soviet Air Force could not compete with the Luftwaffe 20 years ago. Soviet planes were often out of date, and pilots did not have sufficient training. We shall create a proper Air Force for Colmy by building more air bases, recruiting top-of-the-line pilots, researching the latest models for fighters and bombers, and constructing powerful airplanes to rest control of the skies and rain death on enemy cities. Nice. Hey, poverty? Wait. Expense state welfare. Okay. Yeah. That's why I saved a PP for this stuff. And record training? Oh, bonus for industry? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Ab so positively usely. And, yeah. We might as well start rolling on in. It's fine. We'll be fine. Are those groups divided and such? We'll be fine with us. Uh, any other planes before we do this? Cast. You know what? Screw it. Just go on here. We have no extra cast. We have any... F oh, yeah. Yeah, we definitely gotta get better fighters than this. This is not very good. Alright, my friends. There we go. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. Into the fray. Zlatos will be ours eventually. There's some serious lag. Goring is still... I don't know. It's 69. Usually, the game bugs out, and just Goring just dies every single time. But right now, not so much. Goring is still chugging along, isn't he? No. Oh, he no. I was wrong. So, he, he was able to defeat these guys. Dennis Skinner. Who the heck is Dennis Skinner? Uh, we have the Republic of Scotland. Oh, we're able to defeat... Oh, maybe we weren't able to defeat... No! Yeah, what? Wait. NDL Patriots. Oh, so you weren't able to actually kill them off. Interesting. So we won't be fighting Goring, but we'll be fighting Shona. Interesting. Hey, everyone, about that, please go right ahead. Oh, there goes the Zetalus. Nice. And we need the PP2 to uh, core them, too. I forgot about that, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, captured. Nice. We lost it. That's fine. Keep going, guys. I see this point. Just make one big old front line. Because we're at war with all these guys anyways. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, both of the Western and Central Siberian regions completely, like, like, shattered. Which is great for us. Don't get me wrong. I love that. But still. Heavy machinery. Go and grab heavy machinery. It's fine. And now the Air Force. Follow it up with <laughs> the Fisherman's Dream. Uh, Yefimova's father had whispered dreams to her when she was a child, dreams of a shining fleet of ships. Flying the ensign in unison, each ship, he had told her, was far bigger than the f fishing junk they s shared. They had guns, ammo stores, quarters for dozens of people on each ship, and the burnished steel shone like a gold in the sun's rays, some, like, forgotten treasure brought to light. Of course, that had been a long time ago, and he had whispered, and now the Republic was there... The public they were in was landlocked, and the dream for now was dead, but one day the great fleet would rise again, and Russia would once again take to the seas, perhaps not in her lifetime, but... One day... Yefimova. Listen, as a cold wind drifted about their junk, and as she grew, she learned. She taught herself knotting, sailing, drifting, using only the stars and harsh northern spirits for navigation. And as she grew in the wisdom of her fishing fleet, expanded from one to a half dozen. She'd grown powerful, but when the Republican Navy had sent its letter of an invitation, she knew what she had to do. A vision, after all, was worthless enough fulfilled. She wished her father could see her now, standing upon the deck of the Republic's latest vessel. He'd always been foolish, and perhaps a little bit too attached to the drink at the end, but he never wavered, and her dreams were his dreams too. And watching the flag fly above a silver, uh, uh, yeah, silver sheen ocean, gulls flying overhead as the engines whirled, Yefimova felt something in her heart glow. Her father, whoever he was, could rest now. His dream was here, in a flesh, in the flesh, and she was living it for him. Could you see me now, Dad? I made it. I keep spinning. Ooh, GDP is a lot better than it was before. I love it. And we're building lots and lots of roads. Um, hey, we captured Lena's body. Great, for four decades of history in her hands. Nice, awesome. Any upgrades for you guys? Some of you guys are still using tanks here, which we need to have our own separate tank core, but we'll get there in a little bit. What is equipment like right now? Actually, yeah, let's keep working on this stuff too. Ah! Oh, there goes Yemen. Two men, thank you! And it's a little bit ahead of time. Oh, we're gonna need some engineers. Go ahead and grab engineers. We need planes too. Oh! Yay! I captured the plant. We lost the plant. We lost the body. Oh boy! <laughs> Hey, gulags, yay! Oh, we don't have enough people to even core that stuff yet. God dang it. And give it some time, I'll core this too. Hey! Nice. 
and a visit to Washington. Ever since their democracy was first formed in the ashes of the USSR, one of our biggest diplomatic goals was to someday meet the President of the US and discuss our global defense of liberty. Alexei Kosygin, our own President of the Republic, would like to establish a meeting with the US President, LBJ, in Washington. We'll take any opportunity to meet the wonderful American people, and if the proposed summit goes well, it will be another diplomatic achievement we can cross off. Absolutely. I, I can I feel like we can safely say we won this war these wars against these groups. Hey, how many men have we lost? Honestly, probably like ten thousand max, maybe. Yeah, two hundred some. We've killed ten thousand, which is pretty nice. But insurrection. Oh man. Oh no. Say it's not so. And these guys are dead. No report. Yay, we won. Now we can do this one, but we're gonna wait because I wanna make sure we get all the goods that we really do need. Royalist victory in... That was really fast. Holy crap. So far, I would say pretty damn good. <clears throat> we'll build up all this stuff too. Um, build up the cities first. And if we need more industry, I will build some millies up too because we, we will need some serious amount of, serious amount of planes. You know what? Build some millies right now. Since we're running out of space, we're going to do two. Do it three times. There you go. That should be good enough. Awesome. <laughs> Apply for OFNA. Though our current diplomatic status with the OFN is quite limited, we can use some foreign aid to continue building up our country. Our democratic government is located in the middle of the ra ravaged Russia should be enough to convince OFN officials to grant us status as a prospective partner nation. It may be the first step on the road to becoming a proper defender, proper defender of democracy like our American brethren. Okay, they refuse a meeting. The U.S. government has responded to a proposal for a meeting between our uh, presidents with a carefully worded letter. And, uh, short, the answer is no. This is certainly a slap in the face. Especially after all the careful diplomatic efforts. What? We're not good enough for you? What? Discontent with the government will grow. That sucks. What do you mean? There's nothing we can do about that. What do you mean, man? Moscow autonomy is really, really kind of thick if you look at them. Uh, uh improved. There you go. Oh, we're going to need some of this improved anti-air. Yeah, we're missing 10,000. Jesus Christ. Well, that sucks. So we're missing anti-air. We have 91,000 things on guns, which is not bad, but still. How's artillery looking? We have not a lot of political power. Artillery's looking very, very good. Holy crap. Lower by 5 for now. Um, lower that by 3, probably. That'll be fine. Tanks are okay. Planes are okay. Except for cast, but whatever. The last democracies of Europe. With the rapid expansion of ideologies like fascism and socialism, it has become increasingly important for democratic nations to band together during the time of crisis. Essentially, we need to reach out for any European democratic hand we can't hold on to. And this must be up for diplomatic relations with these rare countries. Together, we will form a continent, continental bulwark against the evil threat of authoritarian regimes. Hey, what did the Richard Report offer? What the heck? Disappointing news to come from Washington. While the American government has noted our offer of basing rights on the YC has, has its benefits, that they desired continually positive diplomatic relations, the price tag was ultimately too high for them to justify. Negotiations over the agreement broke down, and unfortunately, they broke down quite publicly. Word of the has already made its way to the press, and some commentators are calling for the foreign minister to resign over the matter. With the diplomatic row and the loss of potential financial lifeline, this has clearly been a major blow to our government's upstanding. Why can't people just blame the Americans? Seriously, just blame the Americans. It's their fault, man. Oh, leave him be? Oh. Oh, we can end his personality. Oh, that would be bad. Leave him be. Probably want to do that one, though. But socialism? Yeah, yeah, I'll probably do that one. Yeah, power vacuum. Too much of a power vacuum. Appeal for recognition. Even though we are a regional power in Russia, some countries still see us as a just another warlord state. Diplomatic recognition is the first big step in becoming a relevant world power. The defender of democracy we aspire to be. We must call upon nations like the USA, Iberia, England, and Italy and convince them that we are a legitimate state and deserve a diplomatic recognition. Well, America already said no, but, you know, whatever. We'll do the best we can. Where are the tanks? You and you. Get out. Uh, I want as much attack here as possible. Nice. Svoboda. Svoboda. Hello, Svoboda. And you are going to be led by Mr. Attack Attack. Hey! Another tank division. Nice. I want you guys to train. All infantry train as well. Embassy funding. Now that we receive diplomatic recognition from some major world powers, we need to establish official embassies in each country that recognizes us as a legitimate state. We'll have to set aside a part of our budget to maintain these embassies, but we'll also enjoy full diplomatic relations with several leading nations. It's a small price to pay for a spot on the world stage. Advanced anti-tank, very nice. Yeah. 
E Russian unification would be nice, but we don't really need that just yet. And call for investment. Oh, things are falling apart. Oh, engineer core, nice. Oh, America finally recognizes us? What the heck? A diplomatic message has arrived from Washington. The government of the U.S. intends to officially recognize our West Russian Free Republic as a sovereign state, and to treat us as such in all diplomatic conduct. The support of the U.S. and the OFN is alongside it is a major diplomatic victory for us, and will undoubtedly help us secure a place on the world stage. Iberia recognizes? Bro, bro, I guess the next time we're going to do this, just remind me to do the left side here first, and then come over here, because that's such BS. What the heck? They're not going to aid us, but they're like, oh, yeah, we'll recognize you. <clears throat> as was Italy. All right, then. Call for investment. Our treasury can only pay for so much of the projects we started to transform this country, and now is the time we look to foreign investment. Thankfully, we can negotiate a deal with this new country that has recognized us. We can assure these countries that they decide to invest in a republic. Our debts will be paid back tenfold, and every country involved will benefit. Yeah, we got to do that one first. Um, regional development, I'd love to do, but... Eh, that's kind of okay already. Do we have another tank or something? Oh, motorized. Nice. Very nice. Well, it's doing a lot better than I thought it would already, so... Uh, put medium priority for that stuff for now. <coughs> Military budget boost. We don't have enough factories already. Nice. And call for investments. Nice. Please make investments in our state. We could really use it. And it's cold personality. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then once we're done with this focus, then we'll go and reform ourselves. It's almost 1970. Anything over here we really care about? Special forces? Not too much. Oh, get some better tanks. Yeah, we definitely gotta get better tanks and such like that. Oh my goodness, I feel like so, we're so behind on that stuff. You sure everyone's done training? You sure? You sure about that, son? Fighter wings? Yeah, we do gotta get some more fighter wings, too. Uh, grab both of you. Go right there. 400 here. Any more cast? No, we got some tactical bombers. Interesting. All right. Whatever. I don't want to deal with these things. Call for investments. Interceptors don't even bother with them. Cool. All right, so I guess that's going to be it until someone says otherwise. I guess we're going to do Russian reunification. The Russian Free Republic is born, my friends. As is auto saving as well, which is making the game like extremely hard. Um, I don't mind killing them off, Kazakhstan, but let's begin with the 69 election. It's time for a new election. The usual suspects are running fierce campaigns to make their way to the top, and as always, one will become Russia's helmsman for the next few years. Of course, considering our current position as master of the Western Russia, whoever wins the presidency is likely to go down in history as one of the one who made the nation whole again after nearly 30 years of strife. Such a fact is not lost on the contenders, and each who have their own ideas about how reunification should play out. Well, I'm probably just going to stay with uh, the same people. Uh, if you want to buy that, please go ahead. We're going to go with SMR again, probably, just because... Uh, well, why not? I want to stay with the same party, so... It only makes sense, especially since... Um, actually, we need to go down there? No. Uh, this one, too. Stress... Not this one. Stress the border issue, so... <coughs> the SMR campaign. Well, after we do this stuff... Yeah. Exceptional. The SMP. Arctic Russia. Let's do Central Russia and... S oh, my goodness. There's so much support all over the place. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's do... Western Siberia? Eh. Western Siberia. <clears throat> the SMR campaign. It's election time once again in the Republic, and the Union of Young Reformers has a serious chance of achieving victory, naturally. A winning strategy will require a winning campaign, emphasizing issues that Russia's voters see as relevant to their own lives and choosing popular policies in response to them. But, as the question always is, what is, is to choose? Russia, as it stands, is a backwater, uneducated, and globally isolated. It has been so for decades, and voters no doubt want things to change. Here is where the SMR can present its recipe for the nation's recovery. Expanding investment in education and free trade policies so capital can flow into Russia once again, and the construction of robust ties to the free world. May Russia's rise to global prominence mirror our rise in the polls. Yes, please. And then to wonders. Um... If you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. On to the onto future, but a power play. To the surprise of everyone across country and beyond, Alexander Yakovlev, an up and coming politician from Arkhangelsk Oblast, has won the primary to be the candidate of the People's Democratic Socialist Party. Originally considered a dark horse candidate for the party, he nearly beat out his moderate opponent. For years, Yakovlev has been representing the DSMP's left wing for years, advocating for a stronger left wing economic policy, and said the charge against the party's economic liberalization. This, combined with the support among the former front held regions, has now capitulated him, or not capitulated him, into the status as a major presidential candidate. While many on the right of 
of the DSMP grumbled about Yakovlev. The center and left winger openly congratulated the candidate on his victory and expected to have even greater representation in the National Assembly. Whether he can win the presidency, however, remains to be seen. Let's see what this youngster can do. <clears throat> and I'd love to just go straight to war with these guys, but we'll try to do it democratically. We'll try. We'll try. We'll attempt. Um, actually, a little bit of... No, oh, that's not bad. Cool. Keep building. Oh, yes, please. The new reformer. <clears throat> The meteoric rise of the Iron Governor Konstantin Katushev has continued unabated, as he has recently secured the leadership of the SMR as a whole, and thus its official nomination for the upcoming presidential election. Leveraging his enormous personal support and political influence within Ninsi Novgorod in the wake of President Alexei Kosygin's recent announcement of his retirement, he has moved quickly to position himself as a candidate for succession. Although other senior party uh, figures soon did the same, much as he did in the earlier gubernatorial elections, Katushev's early advantage and quick action proved decisive, and was elected leader of the SMR on the first ballot. This surprised many observers who were expecting multiple rounds of negotiation by candidates among the SMR caucus. However, as was evidenced, the increased degree of party centrality upon Ninsi Novgorod overwhelmingly favored Katushev, and support for other contenders was seen to quickly collapse among the contingents of SMR deputies not already from districts in or around the city. Having secured his party's nomination, Katushev is soon, along with his candidates, put forward by other parties, expected to begin his national campaign for the presidency. While many have expressed certainty that the policies of the young reformers are likely to find little support outside urban er areas, others have been quick to identify Katushev's skills at attractively packaging SMR ideology. Only time will tell which opinion proves correct, all but inevitable, and connect with the intellectuals. <clears throat> The SMR's philosophy emphasizes the values of openness, humanism, and intellectual achievement. Unsurprisingly, this makes the middle classes and intellectual elite a natural basis for the party. Any successful campaign will involve mobilizing voters of higher status, whether material or educational, to the polls in order to beat the other party's rabble, and voters don't simply turn out because of similar social class. The SMR needs an effective infrastructure that can mobilize its base, and the best way of doing so is by meeting them where they are. Sending campaign officials to donors and universities will allow us to build the party's connections to voters just in time to shepherd them to the polls. Apologies for speaking very fast, but let's do Arctic Russian next. Nice. <clears throat> very, very good. Never enough, soldiers. Never enough. <clears throat> and this is still going up. By a decent amount. Uh, oh, pulling up data. Nice. What is this? Modern research facilities. Politicized academia. It's not bad. Crisis in Nanjing. Oh, boy. Say it's not so. Anything else we could do here, maybe? No, yes. Military intervention. I did say I want to do this peacefully, so we'll see what happens. Platform for New Century. Alexei Kosygin was a very principled leader, and he helped raise Russia's new democracy from infancy. However, he still held on to obsolete ideals, elements of Russia's Soviet past. While the message methods were liberal and democratic, his ends were socialist, even if they were less so than Bosnesinsky or the extreme left. This element of the SMR was already vestigial. <clears throat> vestigial when Kosygin was in office and now it's time to move on. The new platform will invoke our earlier ideals of freedom, both in speech and markets, and of sensible international cooperation while quietly abandoning Kosygin's leftist sympathies. While some voters may be upset by the transition, others previously hostile to voting for socialists should, should more than make up for the difference. <clears throat> Meeting and greeting, the train was always late, which meant that Sergei was always late. Him and every other poor sap stuck waiting around as the inevitable passage of time slowly brought them together and closer and closer to death. An older man wearing a brown suit sat down next to Sergei, and it was none other than Alexei Kosygin himself. <clears throat> the president was Sergei's deputy in the National Assembly, and he was surprised to see a politician taking the tram. Even more surprising to Sergei was when Kosygin turned to talk to him. Hello, my name's Alexei uh, Kosygin. Do you know when the tram will be here? Sergei chuckled briefly at the question. Sometime between late and never, deputy. I thought you politicians had cars or something, no? Flat tire, at least I gotta meet my constituents this way. <clears throat> about... Uh, that. I feel that the president's getting too buddy-buddy with that Zidane fellow. Is a coalition going to dress up? Yeah, that's that's a problem a growing number of people are beginning to notice. I love to bring it up, but the coalition needs unity in these times, not division. If it becomes too much of a problem to tolerate, I'll make sure he hears of it. Good, thanks. Good to know that you're still doing something about it, said Sergei. Just then, a man came running up to the tram stop, shouting about how some paramilitaries had busted the tram. But they all had to walk now. We really need to talk about the trams in this city. All right, everyone, so now it's February 12th, 1970, and we need to talk about the new mandate. As the election is upon us, hordes of citizens can be seen rushing across schools, public offices, and other polling places in order to let their voices be heard by the high instances of power. While they place their trust in hopes of a better future with, by voting for the preferred parties and candidates, the countdown starts as Russia's future is decided by its people. Nice. And yeah, we'll go to the research very soon as well. Uh, it's 1970, just grab this one. It's fine. Always could use better tanks, but whatever. Happy March, everybody. Happy, happy March. Uh, Western Siberia, maybe? Uh, why not? Hopefully we win. Well, I have a feeling we will. 
And we have three quarters of a million map already. Nice. Very nice. The new mandate. Pulling updated. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on. I want to at least get to the next level eventually before we go to war with Germany. Lieberman, huh? Vorovnov. Zenerman Gvishniani. Huh. Eh, that's not great. But not bad. Uh, it's really good for consumer goods and political power, but not great for a resource efficiency game, which we've kind of made up for already. That's not bad either. Ah, the new mandate, my friends. Uh, this 1970 general election. We're going to put that. Please, go ahead. Let the best candidate win. Who won? Who won? We need to know. We need to know now. The SMR has won elections. Um, with Russian, with Russia's unification drawing close and close, it's become clear that these elections may determine the entire fate of the entire motherland. The campaigns for this election has been fierce, with each of the parties wanting to be the party that unified the motherland. In the end, the Union of Young Reformers won the elections, with newly elected President Kos Katushev giving his inaugural speech in front of the National Assembly earlier today. The Union of Young Reformers has always stood for economic liberalization, and Konstantin Katushev is no exception. Under his leadership, the SMR has seen a shift to the right, embracing free market policies to a greater and greater extent. It appears the voters agree with Katushev, and his promise to improve Russia's economy, integrate West Siberia, and unify Russia by the end of his term. With Konstantin Katushev now possibly overseeing the unification of Russia, all of Russia awaits to see how we will determine the motherland's future. We shall bring prosperity and democracy to all of Russia. Oh, here we see. National Assembly election results. We beat the crap out of the other two parties. And the total vote, 55%. That's nice. 490 out of 886. And 490, yeah. That's not bad. That's pretty darn good. I'm gonna, I'm not going to lie, man. That's pretty good. And the reforms for Russia. West Siberia has fallen to the Free Republic. With our task of our generals had to accomplish, it is time for economists to do their jobs to bring the Republic's bounty to the region. Konstantin Katushev lived through the Soviet Union's downfall and then survived the political machinations of one of its many successors, fully believing in one fundamental truth, that reform once elevated old Russia into superpower. And reform shall soon restore new Russia as one to as well. Yeah. And if you want to read about the atomic age and all this nuclear stuff, please go right ahead. Um, this happens, this is pretty much the generic one for all Russian nations, or, you know, warlords, or regional powers, so. These are all pretty much exactly the same, but, yeah, we can close out of that one, close out of that one. But yeah, who's this guy? Katushev? Yeah. You definitely seem like a dude. Oh, so camp oh we can still campaign? Um, you know what, for the next election, which we won't have probably, we'll do somewhere else in Central Russia, why not? We can do that one. End of the Atomic Age. Uh, crafting our future. Unification. Uh, let's do this one. Oh, let's do that into the Atomic Era first, and then we'll do that one. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, how many? Oh, we got one day left. That's fine. And great. Pulling up to the nice. And since we're here, go get some of this up too. That, that'd be very good. Infantry weapon improvements. Yeah, I get 30% more our land out of tech is super, 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 super good. But what do we want to do? Research facilities will get better. Um, yeah, for reunification, just in case. The warlord era had been harsh on the Russian people. Many of us still recall the days when entire families succumbed to starvation, sickness, or the depredation of bandits. Some even may know these unfortunate souls are once belonged to their kin. Though much of the era's sufferings are behind us now, the gruesome scars are left behind still, plain for all to see. One of these scars is poverty, abominably high poverty. As a right-wise government of all of Russia, it is our responsibility to uplift its people from their sorry state. In this, we will be assisted by a safety net strong enough to keep every citizen from experiencing this, the miseries they and their heirs had scant years ago. But hey, a decrease in poverty or free for reunification? A toast for economists. Nice. Awesome, 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 awesome. 3.4 trillion? Or billion, I should say? Not trillion, my goodness, that'd be really bad. Not bad, though. Keep building, keep building, keep building. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, we can do this stuff, yeah. Um, let's go and do spend our PP for this. Research facilities are very good. Anything else? Academic base, awesome. There you go. Reconstructing the Wasteland. In truth, we have much to thank for the warlords and pretty petty statelets which once lorded over West Siberia. Differences in ideology must not blind us from the fact that the governments pay close attention to reconstructing their lands until fields can be harvested for crops, mines extracted for ores, and factories retooled for consumer goods. Our tenuously balanced treasuries doubtlessly pleased over the improvements already made. But that doesn't mean the Republic's new fields, mines, and factories need no more attention. For all that, the warlords can make treasure out of nothing. Their shambolic works still pale before those built by a modern, mature economy. One like ours, for instance. President Katushev has thus decided to allocate a portion of our budget towards projects in Russia's new territories, that their facilities will be brought into par with Sigtivkar's finest. Absolutely. Get main better, better main battle tanks, thank you. 
And I'll see this one first. Expand on Kyberson. Project Kyberson has been bearing fruit in Western Russia. The data received from computers has proved invaluable in advancing our economy under the world stage. However, currently our Kyberson infrastructure is limited to Western Russia, and we've now annexed a large amount of territory that is in desperate need of economic recovery programs. In order to make the Western Siberian economy more efficient and more effective, our president has proposed for increased funding to be allocated to Project Kyberson, and for additional Kyberson offices to be constructed in key locations across Western Siberia. Our government has determined the cities of Tumen, Omsk, Svedlovsk, and Ninzi Tagil to be prime locations for these offices. Not only will these offices help open up much-needed job opportunities in these recently incorporated cities, but they're also the largest economies in Western Siberia, and therefore are most in need of Project Kyberson's optimization. Keep spending, guys. Keep spending. And consolidate the energy sector. With both the regions of Western Siberia and Western uh, Russia under our control, we now have an unimaginable amount of resources. While some private enterprises are already making moves to establish their domination over these markets, we must ensure that our nation's oil production is handled efficiently and effectively. As such, our president has approved the creation of a state-run oil and gas concern to be aided by Pre Project Kyberson once it is further developed, in order to ensure that oil reaches its destination on time in its sufficient quantities. This firm will also ensure that profits from the oil industry don't simply end up in the hands of oligarchs. Using this firm, our government should be able to expand our oil reserves and use the profits to fund projects that will give back to the people, of course. Apologies once again for speaking quite quickly, but establish a Russian sovereign wealth fund. Wise men save money while fools spend their towards even beyond bankruptcy. Wise men, however, spend their savings on investments, which generate money, ensuring that their total savings grow by the year. So do these men shield themselves from externalities while simultaneously enlarging, enlarging their fortunes. A sovereign wealth fund implies uh, wiser men's logic to a nation state scale. Managed by financial experts, it receives money from the government and funnels them as principal back towards well earning stocks and bonds. Both principal and interest may then be utilized for whatever higher purpose the fund is bestowed. For the free republic and its generous influx of oil money, that purpose is securing every registered citizen a comfortable life even when they are old and infirm. Nice and smart. And the crafting our future. Uh, when Pyotr Alexevich became Peter the Tsar, he inherited a backwater from his father Alexis and brother Fyodor. Its cities harkened the Kievan Rus in the antiquity and Bucolia. It laid, its laity lived almost to the a man as illiterate peasants and serfs, as nobles and generals rule their fiefdoms like free boyars. Rather than subjects of an imperial majesty, lesser men would be tempted to leave the state uh, of things be, after all. What use was there changing an unstoppable course for his course? But Peter proved himself above and beyond men as concept altogether. By his decrees, they were greatest cities, willed into existence. By his tutelage, the evolution of peasants and intellectuals, craftsmen, and clergy. And by his ironclad will, seditious subjects and rapacious of rivals alike humble before the twin-headed eagle. The emperor's passing completed. Peter the Tsar's metamorphosis into Peter the Great, guiding light and model for all Russians, regardless of ideology. It is his footsteps which we have followed yesterday, and are following today, and will follow tomorrow. History repeats in cycles, and as sure as the world turns about itself, so too shall Russia repeat the reforms which blossom sun-kissed flower, sunflowers from its all-encompassing wastelands. Nice. And still building. Expanding university funding. The quality of rush life in Russia is beginning to rise and our economy is doing well. With increased prosperity comes increased demand for a skilled workforce and to obtain these skilled people, we need to educate the people. Unfortunately, university level education has not been a high priority for Russians ever since the collapse into anarchy. Our president shall be increasing the funding reserve for universities and higher education. Increasing university funding will also aid our economic endeavors and replenish uh, Russia's academic scene and its next step in advancing our nation to the modern age. Russian thinkers shall once more share the knowledge with the world. Nice. It could cost a little bit more, but that's okay. Even though we get more taxable population, too. This is not bad. New conservation... Cons conservationism. As this one, a hand to the West. Far beyond the Reich's clutches stand with the U.S. of A. Since its loss in the Second World War, the Western Hemisphere's colossus has prevented the Germans and Japanese from exporting their poisonous fascisms to other free countries around the world. Those willing to submit their wills and wherewithal to the free world's cause joined Washington's tight-knit circle of allies of Organization of Free Nations. Surrounded as it is by existential threats, the free republic must approach America as a fellow free nation. Washington's credit and protection may well secure our precious fortunes throughout this decade of surprise. We actually have enough here, huh? Nice to do that. And are we out of anything else? No, we're actually looking pretty good. Get some more planes. We're going to need a lot of fighters. Like a crap ton of fighters. And since we've been up for this, keep doing this. I'm sorry I'm barreling just down, like reading through the focuses. It's got, sort of necessary for what we need soon. And since we're here, we're going to get more radar too eventually as well. So this will all be good. All be worthwhile in the end. And get a lot of air bases. Nice. Lots and lots of air bases. Cool. A hand of the West. Play, flying together. 
Ooh, look at that lag. Oh, I love it. It's been some time since America welcomed us. Hardly in the free world. Already cooperation streets have ripened in both ends of the Atlantic. Arc Hungo's tonnage figures have multiplied several magnitudes since. While American industries now partake on Russian materials for the first time in decades. With what it has offered, our relationship with the superpower seems to be set in stone. Perhaps now is right for expanding this relationship further. President Katushev has penned a request for observer status in the OFM, in exchange for granting most favored nation status to its members. This we promise. Russia's wealth shall forever be wedded to freedom. If actually you can join the OFN, that'd be awesome. The Middle East is just exploding. But new cons conservationism. A core part of Russia is her beautiful, unending nature. The Union of Young Reformers has always stood for protecting the environment, as is humanity's duty to be the stewards of this earth. With Western Siberia's beautiful forests, tundra, and mountainous landscapes now under our control, we must ensure that these beautiful lands are not butchered by industrialists and the greedy. Of course, our mission is made more difficult by those who govern Western Siberia before us. Those uh, such as Tiansk. Tumen and Omsk, their environments decimated and polluted by the policies of Kaganovich and the Black League. We must clean up their mess and protect, of course, what is left. And we'll get some good pollution regulations. Approach to Siberian liberals. Despite the recent integration of Western Siberia, the various uh, administrations of the region have not disappeared. While some of the politicians are far too dangerous to allow into our democracy, especially considering the tumultuous history our republic shares with extremists, however, some of these administrations are filled with sensible enough people. Boris Yeltsin, a politician from, from Sverdlovsk, has been a democratic advocate for some time now, and we welcome him and his colleagues with open arms. Similarly, the liberals as Lotalis can be relied upon for political support. We shall be discussing with these factions, and we can use our recommendations for various bureaucratic positions in our new local government. Of course, we shall be ensuring that the SMR politicians find their way into the most critical roles of these governments, to ensure that these governments are ultimately aligned with our values. Nice. Keep spending. And reestablish the Siberian republics. The old Soviet Union had made many mistakes, but we do not need to dismiss all of them, all of its decisions with the same broad brush. Specifically, the autonomous Soviet Soviet Socialist Republics, which helped provide representation to the various minority groups within the USSR, was in Siberia is home to many minorities, and our republic should aspire to ensure these minorities should see the same level of equality and autonomy within the, our system as they possessed in the old Soviet system. Our president uh, wishes to recreate these Siberian ASSRs, though modified of better federal government structure. With the Siberian Minority Representation and Autonomy Act, several autonomous republics will be carved out of Western Siberia and staffed with various ethnic and religious minorities that require greatest representation and within our democratic system. I love that we're researching stuff very quickly now. It's a little bit ahead of time, but that's fine with us. And onward to the future. Once upon a time, Konstantin Katushev's erstwhile allies would have scoffed at his op vision opposite the assembly aisle. Their opinions no longer matter now, but for posterity's sake, he has had the last laugh. Personal liberties, comfortable lives, a voice in government, an economy worth calling her own, President Katushev has achieved all that he had promised and more. That he had done so while managing the stresses of reconstruction only amplifies victory sweet soccer. With the people in lockstep behind him, the President seeks a bright future to leave him with, a worthy crown to his party's legacy. And what adornment shines brighter than Russia reunited? So, uh, my apologies for now, but like, I'm trying to push this so that between this episode and the next, I can just do a lot of this stuff off screen. And we'll go to war with these guys and get ready to go to war with Germany. That's my main goal. Just going to war with Germany is my main, main goal right now. Um, yeah, I can't believe we actually ran out of things to build. Oh, that's not good. Just keep building for now. We'll be fine. And GDP is. We're getting more debt, but honestly, we're fleshing out our army more, which we're just going to need the biggest army possible. I'll be honest. We just need the biggest one possible. 50%. Nice. And there goes Kurdistan. What is going on in the Middle East down here? Oh, the Syrian Republic looks... Do be looking pretty cool. Hello, Ziad al-Hariri. And if we want to establish closed facilities, that'd be good. Probably. So, um, unless there's another event here, I will see you when we go back and... Or go, go back into the future. Take out the rest of the Russian powers that will crumble beneath our minds. So, if you like the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will... Unify all of Russia in the final episode. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.